Here we are assembling a 16 foot by eight by six foot solid walnut conference table consisting of inch and a three quarter solid walnut. We're using the Domino XL, which is their largest model. And it's hefty, but it does a really good job. It's more for big timbers, for making doors and conference tables. So first, Randy's marking out his where he's going to line up his marking gauge. With the line. Well, you want to make sure it's dark enough that you can see it, and also you make it long enough so that you catch. And I'm going to show you there's two gauges. There's the, the clear one, which is the, that's where you want to line up, but you've got an auxiliary point that really helps hone in on that line. Now, this domino has two settings, um, which is... This right here, which is really, we just discovered this. You can either do a narrow cut, uh, east, uh, right to left, or you can do a wide cut. So you can either have your domino be tight in the hole, or you have a little wiggle room, which we find that as we're assembling these big tables, it's nice to have that little extra wiggle room for assembly purposes. As you can see over here, this table, I, I assembled a section of this with the tight setting, and I worked my rear off getting those things <laughs> and then to some. fit, and then some. <laughs> I'm good. So I'm like, I was dreading today, but now that Randy came up with his idea of using the wider cutter, we're finding that it's much smoother. And, and we'll show how it goes together here yep. in a little bit, yep. and yep. basically comes right in. Oh, yeah. All right, so we want to make a cut. Yep. Ready for that? So we're going to line our... Lines up, and the nice thing is with that wider cut that Matt mentioned, it doesn't have to be perfect here, but just close. Yep. That's the yep. difference of the narrow cut versus the wide cut. Now, it's important so to realize... holding tight. Yep, holding tight there. And we have this hooked up to a Festool vacuum, which makes life so much easier as far as there's no mess. Anybody ever used a biscuit joiner, you know, that's messy. Yeah. This is no mess. Here we go. We're going to turn it on. Domino. Now, now show, we'll hold, hold that up to them and see the, the little wiggle room we have now. So when this goes in, normally it's very tight. Once it's in here now, we have a little wiggle room. So when it comes to assembly, you'll see in our next uh, next clip how the uh, the parts will mate up together, especially when you have 10 feet of these. Yeah. We are assembling this 10-foot conference table. We did the first two as a test, and it really went together like hot knife through butter. Uh, now we have... We have done our domino holes, and we're getting ready. Make sure everything lines Hold up. A Hold a hole. Got Matt doing a few more of these. Now, the interesting thing on this, what makes this so beneficial, <clears throat> this is a 10-foot long table. You imagine trying to get all of these boards glued together and get them flat <laughs> when you do bring them together. This is a great way of getting them very flat. That answers all those questions that people have. A lot of people don't know what that knob does, that, the one that gives you a little extra wiggle room for assembly. Because if we did those all tight and we use those cross stops and I did it 10 feet, would those line up, each one of them? And if I did them all tight, they line up absolutely 100% perfect. But that's not how we assemble, right? Because I would have to stand here. That gentleman down there would have to stand there. And four or five of us would have to lift it up and put it at a perfect 90. Right? But they do line up. I've done it over six feet. And it's, it's, it was really tough. I had to get three guys from marketing to come in and help me. But it was, it was pretty good. They actually saw what it, was, what it was for. So it was good. Okay. Okay. So we have all of our dominoes. <clears throat> now we're going to go through the process of putting the next board on. You'll see how simple this becomes. So Matt's going up the mating piece. We're going to leave it down. And then you're putting in, uh, show them how much glue you're putting in there, Matt. Oh, in, in the hole? Yeah. Oh, I put... Enough to I, cause squeeze out. Yep. And you just play around with it. You'll figure out how much it actually needs. Alright, so this is our first attempt to try to put these together horizontally. Oh my. Oh my. Which 
is possible. <laughs> oh, if you're not holding a camera. I can do it one handed on this side. Uh, I'm not strong enough, I guess. Well, that's pretty doggone good. Once we clamp it. Draw it together. Okay, we got that big bad boy put together very easily. Now it's time to go in and start the epoxy filling the knot holes and that kind of stuff.